What is grid converter? This video will show on high level the basic idea of the grid converter and there will be later on videos that go more deeply in the operation of the grid converter. Grid converter is basically an application that has two operation modes, active frontend mode and microgrid mode. The active frontend will keep TC link constant and microgrip mode will make a grip trying to keep constant frequency and constant voltage. Both of these modes are bidirectional. First about active fronted mode. Here we have the minimum hardware that is needed for active fronted operation and the microgrid mode uses the exactly the same hardware. We have the drive itself, LCL filter, MCB and connects to the existing grid. We have also charging circuit, small breaker, diode bridge and charging resistors. Starting the AV. Uh, charging can start from the start command or separate charging command. Here in the start command the charge control is activated and the DC link starts to charge. When the DC voltage lever is high enough and it's stable, the MCP close command is given. And once the MCP feedback is received, the charging control is stopped. And little later, drive goes to ready state. On start, the active front end checks the voltage angles and synchronizes to that. And then it starts to boost the DC link voltage. Usually this is 110%. On stop, the boosting stops and the voltage goes to its original level. And when the MCP is opened, the DC link discharges until zero voltage. While in run state, the active front end tries to control the DC link voltage. So when the DC voltage tries to increase, for example, there is a generator power in the DC link, it will push that power to the grid. When there is a power demand in the DC link, the DC voltage tends to decrease. And the drive tries to pull power from the grid to keep the DC link voltage at correct level. Most common case for active front end. So in the DC link has inverters with the motor and these either use power or generate power. And the active front end tries to keep stable DC link for these drives. It's also possible that there is no actually need to push power to grid and the active front end is simply used to keep harmonics low in the supply grid. One use case for the active front end is peak saving. So in this time the active front end is connected to battery. We have generators and the loads on the grid. Here the generator is running its nominal power, so basically most efficient point for the generator. And what happens now that the load on the grid decreases, this basically causes the frequency increase also in the grid. Now to prevent generator load decrease, we can use this extra power to charge the batteries, thus keeping constant power for the generators. Same thing here, that if the power demand increases on the grid, the frequency starts to decrease and compensate this, the active front end can feed the power to the grid, thus keeping the constant load for the generator. And then about microgrid mode. Microgrid mode uses same hardware as the active front end, but microgrid mode cannot control DC voltage, so there need to be other equipment that can provide 
boosted DC voltage. In this example, we just have another active front end. This also shows one use case for a grid converter. We have a here a grid at 60 Hz and other side we are 50 Hz. So active front end makes the DC link and microgrid makes 50 Hz grid. So microgrid mode doesn't control DC voltage, so it's boosted externally. Starting is a little bit similar, because on the start it tries to synchronize to the grid. If there is a grid, the voltage and frequency goes directly to the grid frequency and voltage. If start synchronization doesn't detect grid, then frequency goes again to the grid frequency or reference frequency. And then the voltage is ramped to the nominal value. Normal default uh, ramping time is 100 millisecond. Stopping is basically always coasting stop, so frequency and voltage is going immediately to zero. When the unit is parallel with the other power sources, then the power can be first ramped to zero and then unit is stopped. Microgrid tries to keep constant frequency and constant voltage on a grid. If the grid frequency and the frequency reference to microgrid is the same, then the power flow is zero. If there is a load on the grid, this usually decreases the frequency and then the microgrid starts to give power to the grid. After that, when the frequency starts to increase in the grid, that decreases the power. If frequency goes higher than is the grid frequency reference, then the power starts to flow to the DC link. AC grid kind of pushes power to there. Soft generator use case. So many of the SIPs there is a propulsion and shaft generator in the same shaft. This means that the diesel needs to run certain fixed speed that the grid has correct frequency. This fixed speed means that the pitch angle may not be optimal for required ship speed. And this means that the fuel is consumed for the engine speed and not towards the ship speed. What if we add a couple of drives here? Active front end and microgrid mode. Now we can change the diesel speed and active front end can still make the DC link for the microgrid mode. And microgrid makes the 50 Hz grid while the diesel speed is completely different. And now diesel speed can be adjusted for optimal fuel consumption. Active front end controls the DC link voltage and needs existing grid to be connected. Microgrid mode controls frequency and voltage of the grid, needs existing DC voltage to be able to operate. Both modes use the same hardware, drive itself, LCL filter, grid breaker and charging circuit. Thank you for your interest.